hi welcome back to my channel and today we're going to do a yearly flip through of my happy planner teacher planner that I've used for homeschool for the past year that I've lovingly named the behemoth this is the 2017 2018 version of the happy planner teacher edition it is in the size of big it came with red plastic rings but I put on my Levenger copper ones because those I already had on hand and it just flips a bit smoother this is not actually what the front looked like like the cover looked like this is the cover but it is not my jam <laughs> but this is the only teacher planner I could find in my area at that time it was the last box kit so I just sucked it up buttercup and bought it so I just flipped them put the insides that made the insides the outside and this is how I ended up with dots all right so we're getting to the name page that's not really that important all right so it has a 2017-2018 academic calendar and this is how I track attendance for my state the requirement is 180 days so when we have a day of school, I highlight it in blue. And when we take a break week, I highlight it in a different highlighter color. And then I just write the number of days here on top that we did school. I didn't write the days for June or July, but trust me, we're well over 180. Over here, I have a field trip planner that was a part of a previous homeschool planner, lesson planner that I bought in 2015 from a store on Etsy called True Studio, T-R-E-W Studio. And one of the things that she included was a field trip planner. And this is where I just wrote down our field trips. I try and do a field trip a month, but in the Midwest during the early months of the year, January through March, it's really difficult because the weather is not friendly and it's gross and nothing's open <laughs> or nothing cool is open. But I try and write down what the event is, what the date is, what the location, if there's any relatable costs and the post-its, I actually put down as like a pre-plan type thing. And if I remember I'd take it off. Or if the space is like on December, if the space is too full, then I just, you know, use that for extra space. But I had already had this printed off from a previous failed attempt at homeschool planning, so I decided to use it for this year. This is actually the substitute page. As you can tell, I did nothing with it because whether I'm healthy or feeling like I'm on my deathbed, sick with the flu, we school. So that was unnecessary. So this is the monthly. I tried to use it. And eventually you'll see it just pitters out. Like I tried to keep up with some tasks, some goals, write some events. I don't have, like I have one student, but I wrote family birthdays. Cause when I originally did this, I tried to combine home with school and then also quickly realized that wasn't my jam. This is my first monthly spread. It's a little struggle bussy. This was a free printable from somewhere. I don't know. I blame Pinterest for this one. But this is me trying to combine again, home and schooling. It's gonna take me some time before I figure it out. So this is me trying to keep up with the regular layout where it's horizontal and your subjects at the top. This year's doesn't have it listed as a sub, like the subject at the, at the top or the week number or have this design. It's more simplistic. But I tried. I tried to do it the way it's laid out. And I quickly realized that if I was going to keep continuously using this planner, I would need to make a vertical layout. And the next week, as you can tell, I went with a vertical layout and went absolutely crazy. <laughs> Like the, like the, just the sharp contrast between me trying to use a horizontal and me using a vertical, it's visually significant. 
So I put my weekdays at the top so I can have Saturday and Sunday and then I put my subjects on the side and last summer we during the summer even though we school during June and July I tend to have a lighter schedule. So here we had math, ELA is English language arts so there I bulked up, bulked in grammar, reading, writing in there. And then we did a USA unit study. Um, and we also, for science, we studied like the moon, space, and eclipse because the eclipse happened last year. And then on the bottom, I just put house crap. So things like dinners and appointments and things like that. And then here is another free printable. I cannot remember where I got this from. I'm sorry, guys, but I swear if you look up free planner printable on Pinterest it will pop up so I just bought some Avery yeah that's the Avery backing Avery sticker paper and printed it all on there created these boxes from the kit like I had to enlarge it so it can cover the whole Monday to Monday through Friday thing over here and stickers from date stickers from happy planner I think that was my very first happy planner sticker book the dates and holidays and I just wrote out details of our curriculum so here we have you know our Matthew C worksheets and what they actually cover and anything extra that they cover our English language arts we were doing an interactive notebook whatever the worksheet is for writing that day my daughter is mildly dyslexic, so we were doing a program called Reading Kingdom for a while to help her build her confidence in reading and working on that skill. And whatever book she was reading at the time. And then our USA studies, there's crafts. I think this, this is the month we did California, yeah? Because it says Redwoods, yeah, California. And then our moon study and you know just house prep meal prep mailing stuff figuring things out trying to adult oh yeah and we were learning about laws of motion which i thought oh, that's, that's a really nice to look back on that another free printable planner kit from i can't remember where but this one's one of my favorites it's very cute and we get to september and I went crazy with scrapbooking and washi. And then September was very busy for our time. And then the monthly, it's missing the E. But it still says September, September, whatever. I don't know what is up with me being obsessed with these little flaps, but yeah. So this is our monthly. This is a break week. So this this is a good example of showing like what I do during our break weeks when I'm trying to plan for the future, when I'm actually on it. You'll see as we get further into this thing, I'm not actually on it. <laughs> so I just make plans for the next couple weeks to figure out where we're at in math, spelling, science, English, USA, things I need to buy, things I need to get out from the library. And you know, house crap and then we're back in school with our math ELA USA study and specials so our specials at the time were nature study sewing art well I, I, it's not really well at that time it was sewing but it's life skills art and health health and then I'm still trying to keep up with the home prep this is actually a Victoria Thatcher printable that I had to like resize a bit to make it fit the big size. We get to October and nothing. <laughs> And then I tried an all black spread, but as you can tell, I did the first half of the week and said forget it about the second half. 
Now, I guess I should put a disclaimer here. It needs to be said. Some weeks you're on it with your planning and writing it down, or I am. And other weeks you kind of like pitter off. And that's fine. It's There will be points where you see like some really super duper great, great layouts like this and some weeks where there's just nothing. And it's not that we didn't do school those weeks, it's that we did, but at some point your schooling kind of becomes automatic. So you know already like we're doing this worksheet, this, this video, this, this activity. And I just did not feel like writing it down because it's like I, I got bogged down by the size of this. Uh, so I'm really happy to see that they made a classic size version for people who were the big is too big. And then there I didn't even bother doing the monthly, but I do like this. This is probably one of my favorite dividers. So we go from super elaborate and to just, I'm just keeping track of what we did. Still trying to keep up with the house stuff in here. See? It's not that we didn't do school here during these weeks. We totally did. It's just I didn't log it down. And then I was like, oh, I need to try. I need to put in some effort. I need to do something. And so this happened. <laughs> This is my daughter's actual birthday week, so you don't even you don't even get a break on your birthday week. So I let her pick all the stickers and stuff. And she went holographic unicorn, whatever last year. And completely blank. This I actually have to back plan for. Like I know what we did. It's in my traveler's notebook. I just haven't written it in yet. <laughs> so some things I kept track of in my monthly. Um, major people's birthdays, like Maya Angelou, and a book that I probably want to read with her, Beverly Clearly's birthday releases a book she would be interested in like peanut butter and jelly by ben clanton she really loves those books children's book week and i mark where our break weeks are and this is another break week layout where i'm just trying to plan where we should be in the next couple weeks before our next break week so in math, we should be on here. Grammar, we should be there. Writing, we should be finishing there. Spelling, and so on and so forth. Research, any notes. Now we're in May. Also some things that I actually keep track is local events. So we have like a zoo workshop that happens, any like open swim things that are happening at the library, our picture day, which I still haven't done because I suck. And I actually have extra weeks. There's more extra weeks back here, but 
I don't need them. All right, so this is a sheet that came from that True Studio pack. It's a grade sheet. I don't really grade anything other than her math because she requested that I do it so that way she knows when to improve. It also has a goal planner, which I thought was really cool. And in the back, the planner came with this pocket. Here's my, my beef about their pockets. They do this, like the ink rubs off. Even on my, even on my spanking new social media planner, I put in this folder here in the back, this really cute folder. Look, the ink rubs off. So that's probably one of my beefs. I guess I should put them in the front instead of the back, but I don't like it when I flip it over, when I flip it back to write on it, it it's bumpy. So maybe I'll end up taking the folders out. But yeah, that's my thing. But in here I have like, oh, look, we just came off. In here I have like random stickers, random post-its, random notes. I think this would be a good place for you to put your important like paperwork regarding your homeschooling, like your laws or, you know, whatever you need to make your portfolio for, things like that. But yeah, this is the behemoth, the good, the bad, and the blank. And it's okay if some weeks it's not completely decked out in full. It's okay if it's not pretty. As long as you get what you need done, that's all that really matters. It also comes with those classroom record sheets, but I didn't use those because I didn't need them. So if you would like to see a video of me showing you tips on how to use the record tracker checklist thing that comes with the teacher planner, please go ahead and comment and let me know below because if I get enough interest, I'll do it. But it's pushing it in August, but I don't mind. Also, don't forget to click the subscribe button so you can catch more videos. And don't forget to click the bell ringer next to it so you can be notified when I post more videos, yeah? Also, if you like looking inside of the behemoth here, please don't forget to click the like button. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, bye.